What's happening everybody? Suburban Hiker checking in on day 12 of my 500 mile walk. Before we get started, let me take a second to remind you to go ahead and subscribe to the channel and ring the bell to get notifications. I'm going to post a lot of videos and I would like for you to be able to keep track and follow along with what I'm doing. Also, feel free to make comments, questions, you can like and share the videos, all that good stuff. Hey, let's get this party started. Today we are at Potato Creek State Park. As you can see there are a lot of trails, both hiking, bike, and horseback riding trails. But we today are going to concentrate on this trail here, trail number four. It uh, loops around in a nice little two and a half mile circle. And we'll see if I have time to do more after we finish that circle. We'll take another look at the map and see what else we can fit in. Check in with the map, my walk app. Zero distance, zero duration. Let's start this workout. Here's the beginning of our trail. Trail 4 runs alongside a cemetery. Here at the Tata Creek State Park. Let's see what this sign here says. Give us some information and data. Porter Rear Cemetery. This cemetery was officially created September 6th, 1854, when Samuel Gard deeded land to trustees for a burial ground. Free African American settlers from Huggert Settlement were buried here alongside their white neighbors, not segregated. Porter Cemetery Association was formed May 9, 1884 with both white and African American charter members. Oh, there's more on the back side. Let's read about that. Porter Rhea Cemetery has always been a neighborhood burial ground for members from churches of various denominations. It has been called Porter Rhea for decades, perhaps because both Porter and Rhea families owned adjacent land. Although enclosed in Potato Creek State Park, it remains an active, independent cemetery managed by Porter Cemetery Association. How cool. Happy Friday, everybody. Today is April 5th, 2019. We are officially on trail number four here at Potato Creek State Park. Mile number 39 on my 500 mile walk. Trail number four starts by the Porto Rio Cemetery. Runs along the side of it and then down the back of it. And then it runs along the side of Worcester Lake at the same time. Potato Creek is a fantastic park with a lot of history. There's a lot of data. You should Google it and get that data. I have several times. It's a cool story how it was named where it comes from just all the the back the whole entire backstory of this park is something you should check out one little factoid i'll drop on you worcester lake is a man-made lake that's right it's not a natural lake here's a look across the lake this thing is huge it really is The lake itself is 327 acres. That's huge. For a man-made lake, that's fantastic. And it's another great day to be out in the woods. I'm hiking the trails. It's a two and a half mile trail. Runs alongside the lake, through the woods. A lot of birds. I'm here. I'm hearing just a plethora of birds. That always makes for a cool hike. I am totally happy to be out here today. I've been getting pretty anxious. I can't. Uh, I can't pretend. I'm getting anxious to really advance the hiking into uh, more strenuous trips. I want to go more miles more hours 
I want a more arduous hiking path. They have this trail rated as a uh, moderate, moderately rugged trail. It's not bad. It's got some elevation change. It's up and down and winds around quite a bit. I really, I really want to start doing some longer hikes, much longer hikes. I'm talking 10, 12 hour trips through the woods. And I'd like to do some overnights, get into backpacking, get the tent up or a tarp. I haven't decided which I'll do. I think it depends whether I go on my own or if I take the, uh, or if the family comes along with me. We'll have to see. Everything has to fit around a schedule though. That always makes it tough. I mean, that's, that's why I'm hiking in the, the subdivision and, and downtown South Bend and the county parks near the house. Hiking anywhere, just wanting to be outside. And it's easy to be able to do all that and still maintain a nice steady home life that isn't interrupted consistently <clears throat> with trips coming and going. Oh, that little bit of overflow from one lake to another across the path. Just a quick little hop over that. This path is really cool. It starts out paved as you go down the side of the cemetery towards the uh, boat dock fishing piers but then it turns into the wood into the woods and becomes a bit of a, a crushed gravel path and that gradually fades away and just becomes a natural path and now it's back on a section that was a little bit cement and now I'm on crushed gravel again and then that quickly fades into just natural dirt. These trails have a lot of everything. The designers did a fantastic job of making this park. I'm serious when I say you should Google it and read the backstory. The pamphlet you get at the visitor center, it just barely touches on some of the history of the park. I've been doing a lot of research to find parks that I can start going to for those longer hikes and the longer impossible camping. They, they offer camping here. Uh, I was talking to them about it at the visitor center. And it doesn't matter whether you're in an RV, a tent, or a tarp, or a bug bivy. You can camp here but it has to be on the campgrounds. Here, let's go look, take a look at this little overlook here. Extends out over the dock a little bit, or over the uh, marshy part of the lake. That's all marsh below us down here. Moss and overgrowth but if you were to step into it you'd probably sink down a foot because it's all muck man i am having such a tough time keeping going there's just so many cool things i want to show you guys and i'm gonna flip this around check this out a little park bench here at the this is a spring house so we have a nice little pool of water here Nice moss covered. Now let's walk around this thing and see what the ground is mighty mucky. I should have probably wore a better shoe. Alright, we have a little door there. I can hear water running in there.
they have a sign up here that explains what this is. We'll go take a look at it. <clears throat> and then after this, I have to concentrate on hiking. Yes, I still have a lot to do today, tonight, this evening at home when I get back home. So I gotta stay a little bit on task. All right, let me flip this again real quick. Uh, let's see, can you see that? Check it out. The spring house. The Schrader spring house once preserved the labors of the farm, garden, and kitchen. Before the days of refrigeration, cool water emerging from this spring kept food fresh. The structure over the spring provided cooling shade, protection from animals, and storage space. A spring house contained cans filled with milk, crocks, or mason jars filled with butter, meat, and perhaps a large pickle jar. Baskets of potatoes, onions, and other produce lined shelves. A metal dipper hung from the wall for those needing a cool drink. How cool. There's more, but I'm not going to read all that. Like I say, I have to get going down the hike. Get hiking down the trail. Cool little brick wall here. For landscaping purposes. Built by the original founders or owners of this land. Some stairs going up. There used to be a structure there. I'm telling you. There's a cool backstory to this park. So yeah, as I was saying before, I got distracted. I've been doing a lot of online research, looking for larger parks with more uh, rugged terrain, a little, little farther removed. Whoa, there we go, where was I? A little farther removed from society than what I've been getting so far. This park's pretty good for that. But I'm finding there are other parks that are even a little more off-grid than the uh, state parks here. There are some county parks that uh, have no trails. It's just, just wooded, protected marshlands and such. But you can hike them. And uh, I'm interested in doing that. Be sure to get a compass for that, though. The one park I was looking at in Marshall County, I think it was 860 acres. That'd be easy to walk in a circle in that much space. <clears throat> it's all wooded, no trails. You might want a compass just to make it easier. I mean, you can figure out where you're at by looking at the sun and it's only 800 acres not like you're gonna be lost for days if you have half an idea of how to uh, find your location. Marshall County is also home to a pine forest that I spent a lot of my childhood in. I talked about it in the uh, growing up free range video. I think it was day three. But look for that video, Growing Up Free Range. I talk about that forest. Uh, I believe I was calling it U.S. Memorial Forest. But it took me a while to find data. There's not a whole lot of information about that forest. Uh, but it is called uh, Marshall County Memorial Forest. And there's a, a neat little backstory to that one too. Uh, but that took some digging around to find. There's not much information published for that uh, park. <clears throat> there are no trails except for a fire lane that runs around the outskirt of the forest. But uh, it's a cool, cool uh, block of woods. It's only 80 acres. But man, oh man, when I was nine years old, that 80 acres was the world to me and my brothers. We spent a lot of time out there. A few near-death experiences. I'm going to go back there. I'll make a video of it. 
I'm trying to decide how I want to do it. Whether I want to, I haven't been there in 30, 35, probably 37 years. <coughs> and uh, as much as I would love to take my granddaughter to the stomping grounds I grew up in and my girlfriend and show them everything. I think I want to go there by myself because I don't know what to expect. I might get all emotional out there reliving my childhood memories, good and bad. There were plenty of bad. Bad memories and good memories. But that's life, everybody has that. It's one mile. Total time 28 minutes and 20 seconds. Split pace 28 minutes 12 seconds per mile. There you go. One mile down. I just uh, pulled my phone out to check to see how far I had been. And it started going off. I hope I turned the camera on on time. In time to uh, capture that. That's one mile down. How awesome is that? And that one mile was the end of mile number 39. So now we're into mile number 40. How cool is that? 500 isn't such a big number after all. Hey, check this out. I came out. I know, I know, I keep saying I'm going to stop showing you this stuff, but I'm above in a ravine here. It goes down. Why well, we're probably 30 35 foot above where that little creek is down there. I have an observation deck. We're gonna go step out on that and take a look. Hope I don't drop my camera. That would suck. really is a serene setting in this park all right where was I before the ravine oh yeah mile number 39 man oh man that leaves with us leaves us with 461 more miles to go and as we go these hikes are gonna get uh, a little more intense as we can make it work again a lot of this stuff comes down to scheduling I think once school is out for the granddaughter I'll be able to schedule more stuff longer trips farther from the house it's gonna be a good time make sure you stick around for that and uh, I also I also want to stop or start making videos that are not just hiking videos. Not me trying to reach that 500 mile goal. I want to start making videos that, uh, well, that, that just show more of what I see. It's like the streams and brooks and such and the animals. I think it was yesterday's video I mentioned going out into the woods and just sitting and see what kind of wildlife will cross my path and then of course I want to just goof off in the woods too see what kind of trouble get off trail and see what we can see see what we can find one of the cool things about this trail I'm on here is that uh there are a lot of little offshoots that go around other parts of the woods that are a part of this trail and they meet back up. Uh, if they don't meet back up, they dead end shortly after they leave the trail. Uh, you know, just a little offshoot that would take you down to the, uh, to the river or into the ravine and, and you just turn around and hop back up it. There's other neat stuff to see. Pretty cool topography in here. A lot of, 
a lot of big rocks and boulders. At one point, this was farmland. Yep, Google it. It was farmland owned by two separate families. I do believe it was two separate families. The Porters and the Reyes that were mentioned in the cemetery. Of course, there are, there are streams and brooks that run throughout this park. I want to camp here. I've been here a few times. I've probably been here eh, maybe five, six, seven times. <clears throat> but I've not uh, hiked all the trails. Usually we come here, we bring the dogs, and they have a, a dog beach at a part of the lake there. And uh, just a regular beach also. So we'd bring our dogs here. We'd bring our dogs here for walks. And come here with the granddaughter and hang out, do the beach stuff, do the playground stuff. And we would hike some trails. We came here fishing a few times, but uh, we never caught anything, nothing. But I have some friends that uh, do fish this lake. And they said, well, it's a little more than just throwing your line out from the river shore. You really kind of got to know where to go. So people who are a little more advanced fishers than my granddaughter was at that time as an eight-year-old, you know, you guys know where to go fishing. We were just out in a boat having fun. I know one of the trips we made here, we uh, were here with the granddaughter and our awesome dog, Stella. Stella was an amazing golden retriever. But uh, we were out hiking the trails. I think the granddaughter was six, maybe seven at the time. But uh, we ended up getting off trail a little bit. Uh, we stopped paying attention at an intersection of our hiking trail and one of the more rugged uh, mountain bike trails. And we got on the mountain bike trail. And uh, man, oh man, I think that mountain bike trail is seven miles long. <laughs> we, it, it turns and twists and up and down the terrain is pretty cool i uh i would think that'd be tough to go mountain biking on i know it was tough for us walking on fortunately we had a backpack full of food because we were on the on those trails for man i want to say four or five hours before we uh, finished up because we were on the one trail for quite some time already and crossed over to another un un unexpected trail. But uh, fortunately we had a backpack with whoa, cookies and water. And so we found a couple big rocks to sit on and snacked it up and kept walking. That was a great day, a lot of fun. If you are doing some online research, if you uh, Google up Potato Creek, you will find uh, a printable map, PDF file format of uh, a map to, to the park. And that'll give you a good idea what you're getting into 
And of course you can get all the uh, entrance fees and camping fees and such. There was uh, no gate fee today because it's so early in the season. Uh, actually they were going to start, they start charging gate fee at 4 o'clock. Uh, as that's busier time on Friday for them. A couple things that I've been noticing as I edit these videos, and I promise I'm working on them. One of them is the way I talk. I seem to say four or five words at a time and then pause to collect my thoughts before I figure out what else I'm going to say, or really just how I'm going to word it. I already know what I'm going to say. I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to word it. I don't know why I do that. I don't know if I do that in real life or not. Any of my friends and people that talk to me in real life that know, let me know if I do that in real life. It might just be because I'm walking and I'm a little bit winded and not prepared to sit there and rattle out all these words in one long sentence. So I'm working on that. And I am working on camera stability. Oh my gosh. There's a couple times I'm editing these videos and I'm almost getting motion sickness. I hope you guys are uh, watching these all right. Especially when I'm trying to show you what I see as I walk down the trail. The camera swings left and right as I walk. <laughs> and then of course when I flip it around like this and do all that stuff, you know. Of course I'm strange, I get that kind of motion sickness stuff pretty easily. I always have. One of my most hated camera tricks in movie is that spiral spiraling shot from above, you know, that does this crap. All slow motion and stuff. Whoa, I almost got dizzy right there. That's how, how susceptible I am to motion sickness. That little spin made me dizzy. So I am working on that kind of stuff for the uh, videos. I'm trying to get the quality better. I probably, I don't know. I keep saying I'm gonna make them shorter, but there's just so much cool stuff that I see, or at least I think it's cool. You know, and it's just, there's a, there's a lot of backstory to, uh, a lot of the places I'm visiting and I just feel like that's neat stuff to share with people there's a whole lot of backstory to this one too much to even share in one video at least I think so of course I tend to I tend to dive deep into stuff I uh, <laughs> I overthink I overthink I've mentioned that in several videos if you haven't seen those videos I suggest you do as a matter of fact while I'm suggesting that, I also suggest you subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to get notifications for videos I upload. I mentioned a little bit ago, I'm gonna start doing more than just hiking videos of me walking around. I'm gonna start making specialized videos, really going in depth, talking about some of the parks and stuff, and just all kinds of neat stuff I'm working on. Some ideas that I'm developing as I overthink. There you go. Split pace 20 minutes, 27 seconds per mile. Two miles. I got to jabbering and then I whipped the camera around and probably made you motion sick. Oh well. I'm trying to keep track of where I'm at with those miles. I don't want to be the only one who knows how far I'm walking. So, there you go. This concludes mile number 40 in my 500 mile walk. Heck yeah! Only 460 more miles to go. That is 460 miles of really cool stuff. I suggest you start hiking. Matter of fact, I suggest you start hiking right away. I'm already showing you how I do it. Get online, do some research, find some parks, go walking. A lot of people do it these days. I'm getting ready to pass a fellow right now who's out backpacking. I'm not the only one out hiking. How you doing? Good. 
peaceful while I'm backpacking. He's got his bed and tent and everything. I saw it as I walked by. Sleeping pad. And that's what I'm going to do coming up when I get a chance. Again, probably once Caden's out of school. We're going to come down here. We're going to backpack. We don't need no stinking tents. We'll do a tarp tent. If you don't know what that is, Google tarp tent. Pretty cool stuff. Lots of options out there. It doesn't have to be a big tent. You know, growing up, I grew up in the 70s. And uh, we had a monster tent. We could have slept 700 people in it. Or at least it seemed like it when I was six years old. There's a lot of options for uh, shelter these days. Google some of your options. See what works for you. Get out on the trails. Get out to hiking. And even if you're not on the trails, get out on the sidewalk. Get outside. There are new studies coming out all the time that talk about how good being outside is for you. And being active. So if being outside is good for you and being active is good for you, it might be worth trying to see if being outside and being active is also good for you. I think there's enough uh, to suggest that it would be. It's really cool the amount of variety they have on this trail. As you can tell, this is a pretty wide, well-maintained trail. But it also turns into just a foot trail. And as I mentioned, some there's parts that are paved, there's parts that are crushed stone. This is just dirt and tree fall. Speaking of tree fall, there were several trees I noticed that had fallen over the trail and they had already cut them and pulled them off the trail. So they definitely keep up on their trail maintenance here. Although climbing over a fallen tree sometimes can be a part of the fun. Another thing I'm working on with regard to creating these videos, I noticed that uh, I wasn't happy with the distance I was able to carry the hold the camera away from me. So I have an extension for it. Of course, that extension causes maybe a little more bounce. I don't know. This is the first time I'm using it. It's not the easiest thing to control. But I wanted, I wanted you to be able to see more than just my big old head in the, in the picture. Because there's a lot of cool stuff behind me that now I can get farther out and show you. Plus I can get more of my goatee in the screen. That's important. You can get that billy goat in the screen. So bear with me if this, uh, if this thing starts going off like this. And all kinds of stuff because I'm forgetting to look to see where the uh, camera is I could barely see the monitor anyways if it was any brighter you can't see it at all it's almost useless today I can see it somewhat but I'm not one to stare at the camera too long I like to uh, look at my surroundings But if I don't look at the camera, then I, uh, well, I end up doing this and not even know it. So if you see me staring at you more, well, that's what I'm doing. Making sure that I'm in the shot on the screen. Well, I see my car has a two and a half mile trail. 2.3738 so it'll be two and a half miles when I get back to it I uh gonna see what time it is I'm gonna look at 
the map do some math and see if I have time to do some more trails today or if I might just have to come back early tomorrow and make a whole day of it we'll see all right I looked at all the variables did some calculations I'm gonna have to call this a day by the time I get back to the house by the time I get done grocery shopping cooking dinner and uh, get busy on editing videos I'm not gonna have time to do more than I just did so we're gonna have to call it a two and a half mile day 40 miles so far on my 500 mile walk suburban hiker asking you one more time to remember to subscribe to my channel ring the bell to get notifications leave some comments ask some questions whatever any ideas you might have I love to take everything into consideration I like a good idea it doesn't have to be my idea but I do like good ideas anyhow that's the end of day 12 here at Potato Creek State Park I am 40 miles in on my 500 mile walk suburban hiker saying we'll see you tomorrow